some of the best decisions you'll ever make are when you're desperate at night with a cop. Before I went to law school, I drove a tow truck for a couple years for Birmingham, Michigan. And part of the job was towing vehicles for the police department, and part of it was simply towing vehicles for customers. And the weird thing is that they, I was pumping gas at the gas station before I was towing, towing vehicles. And so one day they came to me and said, Steve, do you want to drive the tow truck? And I said, sure. So they actually trained me on how to drive the tow truck, which is, this is the old style, no flatbed. This is the type that has the sling in the back and you back the sling up to the front of the vehicle and then you kind of get it kind of in there and then you put the hooks underneath and you put the chains and then you lift it up off the ground and you drag the vehicle on its back wheels. And it's not that complicated, but it's a little different than the way it is today, you know? So they showed me how to do that. I walked through it a couple of times ago. That's great. I can do this. And they said, okay, now here's the cool part. If you're willing to do the driving of the tow truck for the police department, overnight when the gas station is closed from 10 o'clock in the evening till six the next morning, we'll give the police department your home phone number and they'll call you and say, hey, there's a wreck you got to tow or a vehicle you got to tow. And they'll call you and you come to the gas station, grab the tow truck, go tow the vehicle wherever they tell you to tow it. And then bring the, you know, bring the tow truck back and then we'll pay you. And the cool thing is we'll split the money with you. So if it's a $40 tow, you'll make 20 bucks. $75 tow, you'll make $37.50. And this is big money for an 18 year old kid, okay? So I go, great. So they go, okay, you are now on call. So that night I go home. I've not actually ever towed a vehicle before, but I've learned how to use the tow truck. I just had the five minute training. So I'm at home, two o'clock in the morning, my phone rings. I answer the phone. Hey, it's dispatch, Birmingham Police Department. There's a vehicle to tow over by a street called Pilgrim and Maple Road. And I know the intersection well. It's about a mile west of the gas station. So I drive down there in the tow truck, and the first thing I see is a VW Rabbit that's upside down. It's on its roof. It's night out, but it's dry, and I'm looking at the situation. There's no traffic, and there's a cop car, guy sitting sheepishly in the backseat of the cop car. And I pull up, and I, and I go, yeah, uh, what can I do for you? And the guy goes, tow that. <laughs> and I go, Okay. It is upside down. <laughs> the guy looks at me like, that's your job. And at first I go, I'm curious, how did, how did he invert his Volkswagen? And he goes, look, he fell asleep. He's driving along. He fell asleep. He woke up just as he hit the right-hand curb, jerked the wheel the other direction, and managed to somehow, it, it hit the other side, but then it flipped and landed on its roof. I have no idea what to do. 18-year-old kid, never towed a vehicle before. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm still sleepy. So... I go, okay, uh, I let the chain off the back of the boom. I put it over the floor of the car, which is now upside down. And I reach in with a hook and I put the hook around a seat. And then my goal is I'm gonna jerk it and flip it back over. And so I pull forward with the tow truck and all it does, it drags the car on its roof about 10, 15 feet each time. <laughs> the cops look at me like, you idiot, what are you doing? And of course, there's a guy in the backseat of the cop car watching this whole thing going, I think the guy's wrecking my car even further. But the, all the glass was busted out of the car. The car was, you know, the car's upside down. So I'm getting desperate. And by the way, some of the best decisions you'll ever make are when you're desperate at night with a cop in front of you watching you. So I backed the car, the tow truck up as far as I could and just one good yank. And it actually flipped over and landed on its wheels. And I wanted to do like, yes, but I had to pretend like I knew what I was doing. So I go back over now and I hook the car up and I take it back to the gas station. So the next morning I go into work and they, they go, oh, you towed a vehicle in last night. What was that all about? And I, I tell them the story. And the owner goes, the, it was upside down? And, and, he, and he's smiling and I go, yeah, why? And he goes, we charge more for that. <laughs> Turns out that if you tow the vehicle, there's a flat fee. Anything extra is going to cost you. And they loved it when I had these elaborate stories about what happened when I showed up to tow a vehicle. So I'm like, cool. And it's, it's great money, by the way. So again, I'm getting half of this. So a couple nights goes by and I get a call again and they go, there's a, uh, an accident at Greenfield and 14. And it's famous. It's a famous intersection in the area because there's a T-stop. Greenfield runs into 14 mile road hard. There's, you can't go through because there's a house here. Well, this house had been hit by so many cars that they put a big rock in front of the house, an anti-car rock in front of the house. And so I'm going, oh, I'm gonna go pull a car off that rock, obviously. So I drive over there and as I pull up, there's no car on the rock. The car is on the porch of the house next door. <laughs> the drunk 
person driving this car woke up just as they saw the rock swerve to hit the house next door. So there's this huge land yacht, like the size of like a Nimitz aircraft carrier, lodged up on the concrete porch next door. But as it went up on the steps, it backed down and turned just enough to where there's a tree here. So there's this car stuck between a tree and the concrete steps of this house. And there's a drunk woman in the back seat of the police car. And the cop's pointing at the car and he's like, that's you, you know? And I, and I look at him and I go, how'd you get that there? And I'm walking around trying to figure this out because I got to get it out, you know? So finally I go, I can remove it, but it's going to get ugly. And the cop goes, oh, do you want us to take her? And I said, would you please? And so anyways, the, the cop left. I said, I got this. I drove the tow truck around to the other side of the car because it had a big old push plate in the front. And I just basically, um, I guess the motion would be like this, nudged the car to the side and got it off the tree, backed the tow truck up to it, hooked it up, and brought it back to the gas station. And the next morning, the owner comes out and goes, hey, Steve, what, what happened to that car? Because remember, the front end is smashed. The rear quarter is smashed. And uh, I go, well, drunk driver hit the house over next door to the rock on 14 Mile. And uh, I had to move the car a little bit to the side. He's, oh, we charge extra for that. So he was happy again. So that's, that's cool. So I had a bunch of these calls. A lot of them were just routine calls. Two cars smash into each other. And I had to go there, hook one up, bring it over the gas station, unhook it, go back at the other one. And, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning, you can do that. So one day, I'm getting another phone call late at night. A lot of these are right after the bars close, by the way, 2.15, 2.30. And they go, yeah, over on Lincoln Road, just south of, or just east of Southfield. I go over there, and there's a telephone pole leaning like this. And there's a car, which I think is associated with this transaction somehow, wedged underneath that telephone pole. So I show up there, and there's a bunch of cops standing around. And I'm looking, and all of a sudden I realize there's nobody in plain clothes. And I go, where's the driver of that car? And he goes, well, that's the interesting thing. Several people nearby called the police and said a car just hit a telephone pole. And I go, okay. And he goes, and we traced the plates, and the owner lives right there, two houses down the street. So apparently, almost making it home, she cut the corner too close and hit the telephone pole, and telephone pole's leaning over the car like that. And I go, okay. And I, now I realize the cop is on the front porch knocking on the door, but the woman won't answer the door. She won't answer the door. So anyways, I go, okay, um, want me to tow that car? I assume the guy goes, yeah. I go, <laughs> is that safe? And the guy looks at me kind of like, you tell me. I'm worried about the pole coming down. But So I hook the car up and I very gently pull it and I realize the pole's not coming down. I go, I hope you guys have called Detroit Edison. They said, yeah, someone's coming. So I take it and I go back to the gas station. And next morning, of course, the owner says, <laughs> describe this to me because there's a big old dent in the roof where the pole had hit it. And I said, you know, telephone pole and I had to extract it because oh, that's extra. <laughs> now, sadly, I actually saw one fatality. Of all the time I'm driving a tow truck, I saw one fatality. Got a phone call. One of those really, really warm summer nights. Two, three o'clock in the morning. Dispatcher calls. Says, yeah, um, car accident, single car accident. Uh, Maple Road down by Corton Lake. Very, very well-known area. The road comes out of downtown Birmingham. And it winds around down a hill. And, and I, I get there. And as I get there, it's a sea of emergency vehicles. There's ambulances and fire trucks and cop cars. And the road's blocked. So I pull my wreck her up off onto the grass near the scene and I walk over to a cop that I recognize and I said, what's going on? And the guy goes, well, and he points, there's a Z28 Camaro, brand new Z28 that has run into an oak tree and the oak tree is yay big. It's, it's still there. I saw it last week. It's, it's, it's going to outlive us all. Gigantic oak tree. Guy hit the oak tree so hard it pushed the engine through the firewall and I was walking around this car and it was still up against the, the tree, but they had pulled the guy out of the car and they had him laying on the grass next to the there and they were working on trying to save his life so i was watching this whole scene unfold and i'm like i've never seen a car hit something that hard and i hope he makes it but he didn't and so the police officer came back over and he goes see if i got a problem he goes since it's a fatality we can't tow the car for a little while you got to photograph it measure it all that stuff i gotta i completely understand so a lot of the vehicles leave this police officer's taking photographs i look over and there's an ambulance driver on his hands and knees going through the grass I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, well, he goes, I can't leave till we find all the needles because they'd been using needles, hypodermic needles on the guy that are trying to save his life. And he goes, and they were so busy just doing stuff. He goes, I lost a couple. So I was on my hands and knees with this guy and we found him. We found him, you know. And right around then they wrapped up the deal on the photography so I could tow the vehicle. And I go over and I look at it. And generally speaking back then, you would try to put a car in neutral and tow it on the rear wheels. 
couldn't do that and had a locking front steering system, you would tow it on the fronts and hook it up at the back. This car had problems, though, because it hit the tree so hard, the front end was mushed around the, the tree, but the wheels were cocked one way, and the fenders were pushed into the wheels, so those wheels were not going to turn. When the engine got pushed through the firewall, the drive shaft got pushed back and caused the differential to twist, and I've never seen this before. The drive shaft was now underneath the differential, but it was still attached somehow. And I think at least the front two were flat, and the backs may have been flattened also. It was a mess. So I hook the tow truck up and I drag this thing off and I realize it's not going to tow on the fronts. So then I go around and I start lifting it from the front and I, and I hear a weird noise and the differential and the drive shaft are, are hitting the ground. They're actually lower than where the tires were. So don't have a flatbed. The only thing I can do is put it on dollies. We've got those little dolly assemblies that you can put, like the type you push a car around in a garage with. I put the dolly assemblies together, put them underneath the front tires and then hook it up at the back. I've got about a mile and a half to tow it. Towing it up Maple Road, and I hear some weird screeching noises. It's not usually that good, but it's early in the morning, and I'm all alone. So I get out, and I look, and as I'm dragging this thing on the dollies, the dollies are designed for tires that are straight, and the tires are like this. And so this tire is dragging on this dolly wheel, and this tire is dragging on this dolly wheel. <laughs> Nothing I can do except finish the drive, so I take it to the gas station, and as I'm unhooking it, I realize I've destroyed two dolly wheels. So next morning I come at the gas station. I said, dude, I'm really sorry, but I destroyed the dolly wheels. And he goes, no, we just, we charge for that. You know, I discovered that there's money to be made in driving a tow truck. But the craziest story I ever had is that I was at the station one day pumping gas, working on a Saturday or Sunday, weekend day. And the phone rings and I answer the phone and the police dispatcher goes, um, yeah, this is the Birmingham police department. And I said, okay, what can I do for you? And she goes, look out your front window. So I turn my head and I look and there's a cop car in the intersection, which somehow had evaded my attention, being the brilliant and attentive 18 year old I was at the time, with his lights on in the middle of the intersection at Maple Road and Adams Road in Birmingham, Michigan, major intersection. Cop, I go, oh, okay. So I run out, I jump in a tow truck and I pull out there. He's standing next to an upright piano. There's a piano in the middle of the intersection. And I look at the cop and I go, what's that piano doing here? And he goes, I don't know, but you've got to get it out of here. I go, okay. Apparently it fell off a truck. It was a junky piano. It wasn't like a you know Steinway or something. It was a piece of junk piano, garbage mover was hauling it, it fell off the truck. He just kept going. Someone else's problem now. So I've never actually towed a piano before with a tow truck. So again, have to think outside the box here. So I back the tow truck up to the piano, the backside, and I lean the piano onto the straps where the, the hoist is. And well, this is pretty cool. So I, I lean it back and I take some chains and I put the chains around one on each side and this uh, tow truck had a power takeoff in the back that you could work the clutch with to engage. And so I'm doing this one, I'm watching it. Sure enough, it lifts the piano up off the ground. I'm like, cool. Whole time the cop's going, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He wants me to get out of the intersection. It's backing up in every which direction. Besides the fact, it's just comical to see this piano in the middle of the intersection. So I go, okay, cool. So I jump in the tow truck and I start driving. I'm going to drive this to the impound yard, which is about a mile down this way and two blocks this way. I still remember that vividly. And as I'm driving along, I felt the piano shift. And you're always conscious of what you had attached to the back of your tow truck because you don't want a car coming off or swinging wildly and hitting something. This is a piano. I don't know what a piano is going to do back there. So I look in my rearview mirror and I realize the piano is shifting and now it's dragging on the ground. So I stop and I'm on Maple Road and the cop gets on his PA and goes, no, keep going, keep going. And I point, I go, but it's, it's dragging. He goes, no, keep going. He's, this, this cop's had it with his piano. So I, fine, there's a cop behind me. It's not going to get a ticket for this. So I start driving down the road, and as I'm driving down the road, I see smoke coming off the piano. The piano has caught fire. I lean my head out like this, and the cop is going like this. So I go down, turn right, pull into the impound yard, where the piano is now billowing smoke. I get the fire extinguisher out. I extinguish the burning piano, which is a sentence I've only said once today, and lower the piano put it there in the impound yard, cop comes over, signs a thing, I go back to the gas station, and again, guess what? Towing the piano, you can charge him for that. Use the fire extinguisher, that costs extra. So there you go. We'd like to thank Patrick Adair Designs for their support of the VinWiki channel this month. 
Patrick and his team make some of the most amazing rings out of the most exotic materials on Earth. They make rings out of superconductors and meteorites and stardust and all the things that you can imagine, including old parts from broken exotic cars. They've got over 20,000 customers and Patrick decided to document his journey and the ways that he makes his rings and the cars that he enjoys on his own YouTube channel. So he's part of our YouTube family. He's coming by to tell some stories soon, but check him out at the link in the description below and use the code VINWIKI for a 15% discount. Thank them for their support of the channel and find you an awesome ring.